What's up guys, it's Project, and with only 15 days away, we got some Elden Ring news, finally! Primarily from various media sites and giant content creators, which got like 6 hours hands-on with the full game. But instead of reiterating the news again, I'm gonna break down the finalized starter classes, the stats they come with, and which starting class is gonna be the best for your build when you start your journey in the lands between. Big thanks to Silvermont, who made a video showcasing the class stats with the early access that he got, so now we know all the classes and what they start with now. And instead of going through them one by one, I'm just gonna group the top five classes for popular build archetypes first, and then the last five will just be coverage of the other five with some potential niche build options. So starting off is gonna be the most popular build that people tend to do on their first run, and that is for quality build. If you're gonna go for 40 strength, 40 dex, and maybe some spell usage, this is likely gonna be the best class to start with. I'm not gonna say for sure, till we know what weapons and spells would be in the game, that could be more ideal to use than just raw weapons, but based off these stats, the best quality class is Vagabond. It has the lowest int, faith, and arcane, while maximizing the stats a quality build would want, and will be the go-to if you wanna use pretty much any non-magic or faith scaling weapon in the game. You can use great swords, katanas, daggers, short swords, whatever you want. And instead of relying on buff magic, you can instead just use item based buffs like risens and such for extra damage. So that's quality's best class. Next we'll go Unga Bunga Strength, and the best starting class for that is the Hero. Since you don't need dex, you want that stat to be as low as possible, along with the spell stat, so hero spread is the most optimal so you can focus on vigor, endurance for you to swing your big stick around more, and strength. So if you want to bonk, here's the class for you. Next we got caster, so you know, the magic nerds who want to pew pew from a distance rather than worry about swinging metal around like monkeys. Well, the best class for you is astrologer. This class dials down the strength and faith to ensure int and dex are nice and high for faster and more powerful spells. So this class will be the class to choose for space wizards to destroy the game with, and based off the CNT, yeah, you're gonna be able to cheese a lot of content other melee guys will struggle with. For the fourth best class, we'll go back to hybrid with the Holy Paladin. If you wanna use faith-based spells, which are basically now pyromancy, and use a strength based weapon, the best class for you is the Prophet. It has low dex, low int, with decent strength in mind for more FP to cast more uh, fireballs, I guess. <laughs> so Prophet's basically the best for Paladin or for Firemancy mains, essentially. And the fifth best class will be a mage version of the Paladin, basically, Enchanted Knight. And ironically, it is the Prisoner class. That's right, George. Jorge is the best class for enchanted knights who plan to both melee and use spells, as its faith and arcane stats are the lowest, like astrologer, but it gets more vigor and strength to handle close combat better. Now the dex is a little high, but you still benefit from dex as a caster and you can use more quality weapons with this too instead of being purely tied to strength. So those are the top 5 classes based off popular archetypes. Now I'll simply cover the remaining 5 and wrap it up with the starting items you'll get as well. So the sixth revealed class was, and this is basically tied with the best quality class, it is Samurai. That's right, the Weeb starting class. Finally, we have a class that starts with the Katana for maximum edginess. Honestly, this is basically on par with Vagabond for quality build, depending on if you use Arcane, as it loses one faith in exchange for one Arcane. And Arcane is tied to luck now, so it's potentially a smidge better if you don't plan to use faith at all. But given the CNT and the general buff heavy faith users get most of the time, like Tears of Denial, which a lot of people use for PvP, that extra point can be slightly more min-max. And weapons I wouldn't focus too heavily on as we'll likely be able to get most of these starting items and such early on and not be locked to not being able to use magic just because we didn't start with Astrologer or something like the CNT had. But yeah, Samurai, excellent class, and only one point difference to Vagabond, so it's up to you. Seventh is Warrior. This is mainly for dex versions. It's probably gonna be my starting class as I wanna play the game Power Stance with double buff katanas, so it's overall well-rounded, although I think I wanna go faith buff katanas, so the end points are a bit wasted. Number eight, there's the Bandit, basically Thief Retcon. 
Probably not the greatest class stat-wise unless Arcane turns out to be OP, like if the game has a hollowed weapon or something akin to Blue Blood Sword from Demon Souls, this might be an ideal class for that. But because we don't know much about Arcane, I can't say if this will be the best start, but it certainly could be for more dexterous weapons. Ninth, we got the Confessor. I guess for people that want a quality faith build? I don't think it'll be that good unless you want to go to so level 120 meta, if that's a thing still in this game. But if you're going to go for a quality buff build, this could be ideal compared to profit. And last but not least is the Wretched class, which is basically the new Deprived. You start at level 1, so you do get about 7 to 8 points to spread around to catch up to the other classes, but I don't think this spread is optimal for mid or end game builds, so eh, good for challenge runs I guess, since you'll be naked, but you can just be naked for the other ones by removing the armor. So yeah, kind of whatever. <laughs> and those are the 10 classes. What do you guys think of the new classes, and which class and build are you going to run in Elden Ring first? Let me know down in the comments below. And before leaving, we do know the starting items, and here is the list. Out of these items, it seems the Golden Seed, my seed, Imp Ashes, and the Key are among the best. The Seed straight up upgrades your flask, apparently, which, knowing the CNT, it was hard to juggle both the Health Flask and the FP Flask. So this may aid in that early on, certainly if you plan to invade, where your flasks are halved. So this might help even the odds a bit. The key supposedly will unlock a certain area early on. The talisman is just a basic small HP increase equip. And the imp ashes are just an early summon you can do early on. Now you should be able to obtain all these items in the game eventually. So it's not like you're permanently ahead of the pack if you choose one or if you don't choose one. But the ones I mentioned are likely the better gifts to start out with. And yeah, that's my coverage of the latest Elden Ring info. Very excited for the game based off what I heard. The open world, the enemy variety, and the challenging bosses excite the hell out of me, especially after experiencing Pokemon Legends, where the freedom truly felt refreshing. And I imagine the same will be said about Elden Ring compared to the standard Dark Souls formula come February 25th. As far as my coverage, I don't have early access. I'm not that big of a content creator, so I'm gonna do something a bit different. Basically, I'm no longer going to hold my progress back for streams. I'm going to try to stream what I can, when I can, when my internet wants to work, but I'm not going to go like five hours and say, see you guys tomorrow and continue progressing only on the next stream. I think my content is suffering from doing that too much with the Sekiro Let's Play, with Pokemon, with Demon Souls getting one to two weeks later because I couldn't get a PS5 at launch. So this time I'm going to go hard in the paint like I did for Neo and Monster Hunter World, progressing whenever I can with or without streams. I'm just not a big streamer, so I need to stop prioritizing that over actual video content. So yeah, that's the plan going forward regarding Elden Ring, which hopefully means more content for you guys sooner rather than later. The only potential problem is that I might be forced to move soon, so that could screw things up pretty badly, but I'll keep you guys in touch when that comes up. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching and listening, and please give the video a like and comment so the video gets seen more by the algorithm, and subscribe for more Elden Ring epicness. Bye.